Folding phones are cool. Bad battery life is less cool. What I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna give you some very basic, quick, simple tips and tricks to pretty radically improve the battery life of your Z Fold device. Now this could apply to the Z Fold 2, 3. This could apply to the Z Flip 5G, Z Flip 3, what have you. These tips will apply to any of these devices. And actually they'll apply to most devices for the most part. Today I'm going to be doing them on my Z Fold 2. I'll be showing you these steps on my Z Fold 2, but trust me, I've done them on my wife's Z Flip 3 as well. It just so happens that she carries her Z Flip 3, so I don't have it here in person to film this video. So yes, this will apply to your Z Flip 3. This will apply to your Z Fold 3, your Z Fold 2, what have you. All right, so let's jump into those quick, simple tips. So the first tip here to help improve your battery life does involve your use of 5G. Now I totally understand that some of you guys and gals might have bought this brand new phone thinking, hey, it's 5G, I'm gonna use 5G, it's gonna be great. However, for a lot of you, in particular, if you're someone like me that is on T-Mobile, you're gonna see almost no benefit from 5G. For me, when I walk around Knoxville, Tennessee with 5G in my corner, I don't see any benefit at all. Is my download speed faster? I suppose maybe it is. I can't really tell. What I do know that it's doing though is that it's using a little bit of extra battery life that isn't really doing me any favors. So let's disable that. If you pull down and go into your settings, look for connections up top, go ahead and go in there. You'll see mobile networks. Go ahead and click on that. And then where it says network mode, simply change it off of 5G, LTE, 3G, 2G, 2 and below if it does not have 5G in there. That's it. That's all you got to do. And you should be using a little bit less power. Back in your settings again, let's scroll down to location and look for improve accuracy. Go in there and disable both of those. As you can see there, it says let apps use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth for more accurate location, location detection even when Wi-Fi or Bluetooth are turned off. Well, that's going to use a bit of power that we're going to save by disabling it. Now back in settings, let's go into display and let's turn on dark mode because these are OLED screens, which means that the screens actually use less power when they're displaying darker images. I won't get into the tech of how OLED works, but trust me, it does. And I think it actually looks a little bit better as well. Now still here in display, let's scroll down here to screen timeout. Now mine is set really high because I'm weird, but most people don't need this. So maybe try setting this to 30 seconds or maybe a minute, maybe even 15 seconds is good for you. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna shut that screen off quickly. The thing that draws most of the power out of your phone is that gigantic screen. So limiting the time that it's gonna sit there idle and on is gonna be a good idea. Let's go back from there and scroll down to where you see always on display. And that's something that you can have disabled. Basically what we're talking about here when we talk about an always on display is that little display that will be there on your phone even if it's just sitting there off. And that will over time definitely use some power. If you don't care about that or if you're fine double tapping the screen to wake it up to see notifications or music control or whatever, go ahead and disable that as well. Personally, I like to have it on but tap to show for 10 seconds it's a good middle ground if you're talking about the z flip this will apply to your cover display so keep that in mind now another one if we go back a couple of times and we scroll down to battery and device care go ahead and click on battery scroll down to more battery settings and look for enhanced processing if you've accidentally turned that on turn that off you don't need it you're not going to notice it but it will use some battery Okay, so those are the basic ones, but I've got like two more really not basic ones. So if you put the kids away, let's get down to real business. There is a link in my description to a website containing an app called Galaxy Max Hertz. Go to that website, scroll down until you see right there, download links GitHub. Click on that link, let it download. Once it's done, open it up and install it. If your web browser pops up and says, hey, we're not allowed to install apps, there's a little box you can tick, a little toggle to allow your web browser to install an app. Once that's done, it'll install. Click open. This 
app might actually ask for permission to install a package. Same deal, let it do its thing. What this app does is it's gonna let you have granular control over the refresh rate on your phone. So we're not just talking 60 hertz or 120 hertz. If we go back into the settings and we look at display and we go to motion smoothness, you can go from adaptive to standard, 120 to 60. That will save you battery life. Your phone, the scrolling will look a lot more jittery versus the smoothness of 120, but you will save battery. Well, this app will let you set a middle ground like 96 hertz, which is where I am currently set. But there are some steps you have to take here. The second link in my description will bring you here to these step-by-step -step instructions, but I will walk you through this as well. On your device, scroll down in the settings to about phone, go to software information and look for build number and start tapping that until it says developer options now enabled. Go back, go back again, click on developer options that are now there, turn developer options on, scroll down to USB debugging, turn that on, hit okay. Now, scroll down to the step three, click on that link, scroll down and download for your operating system. I'm going to assume you're running Windows, let that download. Once it is downloaded, you're gonna to wanna to right click it, and extract it using whatever extraction tool you use. At that point, you should have a folder. Go into that, go into platform tools, look for where you see ADB, that is what is important. At this point, you're gonna hit your start button and type in CMD and hit enter. You're gonna get a command prompt, which will pop up and look like this. Now type in CD space, click in the blank space up here above or to the right of this stuff so you get your full link drag the folder to cmd which will copy the the location hit enter you have now you are now command prompting in that folder plug your phone into your computer if it needs to install a driver or something let it do that and they're going to say some different things but whatever it doesn't matter type in adb devices now my phone is not actually plugged in so nothing's going to happen hit enter you will get a pop-up on your phone that will look like this. Tick the box and hit OK, and you should get, or mine says list of devices attached, you should have a device there. If that has all gone well, go back to that page, scroll down, look for this right here. Highlight it, right click it, and copy. Go back to your command prompt, and Control V for Victor will paste, hit enter, and it will be sent through to your phone and you are pretty much done at that point. So let's minimize all this, let's bring my phone back up. And now let's go back to max hertz. And now what I'm gonna show you, if I'm gonna toggle this here to show my refresh rate, you'll see in the top left corner next to my clock, it says 96 hertz. And you can see because right here, I am actually set to 96 hertz. If I set it to 60, I will lock at 60. If I set to 120, I will lock at 120. When I stop moving, 120 will drop down to 60 to save power automatically, but you can just leave it at 96, which is a good middle ground. You're probably not gonna be able to tell a difference, but your battery will be able to tell a difference. And this will actually enable you to do something additional that's pretty cool. Let's go back to our settings again. And you can see as I'm scrolling, I'm at 96 Hertz. Let's go back to battery battery again and you see your power saving mode let's click on that and in power saving mode you can customize this stuff so i like to just have limit cpu speed to 70 percent because you don't need the full power of your snapdragon 865 plus snapdragon triple eight whatever trust me you turn this on and you're literally not going to be able to tell the difference i promise i've ran it for months and i cannot tell but the downside of power saving mode is it drops your refresh rate down to 60 and that sucks because 60 looks terrible to me. Well, let's turn this on. Let's go back to max hertz and let's turn that on. And guess what? Now we're back at 96 hertz. Well, you think, oh, did we just shut off power saving mode? Let's go back. No, I didn't. Power saving mode is still on. So I am restricting my CPU usage, that was hard to say, to 70%, but I'm still running at 96 hertz at 96 hertz which will look great but save battery now two ways so guys that is my list of pro tips and not so pro tips 
to save some battery on your Z Flip or Z Fold device. Hopefully this was useful to some of you guys and gals out there. Stay tuned for more coverage just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.